Welcome to Learn Brizzy Page Builder with JP. It's been a long time, and if I sound a little bit strange, that's one of the reasons it's been a while. I came down with a small cold, but it has given me this nasal sound, which I've tried to alleviate this week. But yes, it's still there. But I decided after a few people's requests, let's just do another video. Uh, you know, keep things up, especially we are moving closer to September. And we all know what is happening in September. Tra la la. We're going to have pro release. But in a video following this one, we will talk more about the pro release and things that we already know about the features that will be included. But this is a deconstructing block tutorial. So here I am already in Brizzy Page Builder and I'm going to start building my page by clicking here and then it opens the blocks and I am going to choose this block and there's a very specific reason, two reasons why I am choosing this very specific block this morning. Very small one over here. Click on it and it will load our offices and then for background images. The first thing that I want you to be aware of is that previously, whenever we loaded a block into Brizzy, the images got imported onto the page, but they were not in your media browser or in your media file. But now, and I'm first going to start here, let's start by adding a blank block, remove the template, and then I'm going to make four columns. So I bring in my columns from over here, and then I can duplicate it, but I've learned how to use the add new column one, two. Then, of course, this is too small. So if we check, then definitely their block is set to full width. Set our block to full width. Now, these images that you see here are not image elements. They are background images to the columns. And you're going to do that by clicking on the column here and then go to this icon that says background and click on it. Now, previously I had to upload my own images, but look over here, one, two, three, four. These images, whenever you load a block now from Brizzy, the images are brought in. I'm not sure if it's only this block, I'll do some testing, but this is the first time I've noticed it. Previously, Brizzy did not do it, but now Brizzy can. So let me click on this first image and I put it in there. Whenever you put an image inside a column, no, ma no margins, so no paddings, you don't have to worry. It fills the entire column. So let's do the same for the other columns. Go to the column. Yep, there we go. Thank you, Brizzy, for making that one easy. Then this one. And then this one. Where is the font? Okay, good. Right, so now we have to style this first column. The first thing we can do is put on the overlay, this blue color. Go over here, go to the colors, choose their blue, and then you have to reduce the opacity to 90%. That's what Briz did. Then we bring in our, our offices, which is a text element, and we drop it there. Now, the only problem that you are going to observe while I'm doing this is when you work with a full element and you're putting text on the left, you're going to see some issues with editing when you open the pop-up dialog box, but you will notice that soon. Let's type in our offices and then let's style it. It's a heading two and it is white, right? And then the next one is a button and then we bring in the button and then we type in there, visit headquarters. We're going to align it to the left like they did. And now we want to remove this background. So we go here to colors and we just reduce the opacity. Okay. Other thing we also want to do is on this button here, we're going to say, no, it is already there. Right. Okay. Now, all I want to show you is that if you were working with this button and you wanted to add a hover color, usually what will happen is you go into colors over here and there it is. If it doesn't appear like it is appearing now and you need that hover element, all you need to do is grab this box, drag it into another column, do the styling there and then drag it back. 
Right, so we can see a lot of padding applied here in this column. Let's check what they did. And it's very difficult. Go up there. Okay. Doom. And then more settings. And here is our padding settings. 30, 45, 65, 65. We do the same. More settings. And I'm going to type it in. 35, tap, tap. 45, tap, tap. 65, oops. 65, tap, tap. And 65, enter. And there we go. But wait, wait, we didn't change the color of this one. Let's go back to the button and change the color, color over here for text to there. Okay, good, good. Now we're now we're on the same page. Right, so how do we get this part to show up here? And that's where you bring in our good friend spacer. Grab our spacer over here, drag him in there until you see the thick, dark, not dark, medium, medium gray line. Throw it in there. And then go check the settings for this one at 210 pixels. So if I click on it and settings and I drag it all the way, I'm only going to get 200. So to get that extra 10, you just double click on it and type 210 and return enter. There we go. And that is perfecto. Now, of course, one thing you have to take into consideration is that there is no space here at the top or the bottom, but your block has it. Now with Brizzy, you can grab that and pull it. This is your block. This is very nice, but Brizzy only allows you to go down to 15. So to get rid of that 15 pixels, you go into the block, settings, more settings. And here in pet padding, I'm just going to connect them all. There goes my voice, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm going to reduce it to zero. And there you can see it is gone. Great stuff. However, and this is one thing about the blocks, whenever you bring in a block from Brizzy, is you have to be aware of the fact that if you go into mobile view, there's going to be changes. Right? Do you see what I see? You will think, okay, I still see the images. But let's go preview that. And then you will understand that things are very different when you're going to be seeing it on your display. Images are gone. There's only three lines of one pixel each. And the reason for that is this is just a container. It's a column. It is not an element. You need to add an element to it to make sure that it can still display. Let's go back to the desktop and I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab again our friend the spacer, drag him in here, and where is spacer up here? And I'm going to do this until I get about there. Okay. The moment I see the size of the image inside changing, then I stop. I'm going to duplicate the spacer, grab this one, drag it over there, duplicate it again and drag it over there. Actually, yes, you still have to do it. So let's now see the one at the top doesn't have the spacer and the one at the bottom has it. Let's go back to mobile. You see, this is how the top one looks and this is how the bottom one looks. Of course, now here you are going to adjust your spacer. So it's not on the original page. You will adjust it here. So let's see what is the setting for this 200. And let's make it 250. Enter. And now we know what is the setting for it. So we can do the rest over here as well. Enter and 250 pixels. There you go, monsieur. Okay, let's, up, let's go and preview it. Move that one away, right? And we go back to mobile view, and there you go. You can see your images. Right, so be, be very aware of that, that when you bring in a block, these blocks are not styled for mobile responsiveness. You will need to go and do that. Right, to finish up, let's just do our own one. I have also played around with it to just see, you know, so we just do it one more time. I'm going to add a blank block, going to remove it, bring in my four columns, which is two, one, two, change it over here to full width. Right, and then I'm going to bring in my own images, which is from the column, not a text element. So very similar, wait, I started here. And my advice, usually for this kind of thing, I just said update. Why did I do that? Right. My advice usually for images is that as much as styling and settings you can do before you bring it into WordPress, 
is better. Do not leave it for WordPress. If you can do it before the time, it's better. Um, you are better organized. You are better planned. Things will just go smoother. So like these images, I have already sized them all to a one-to-one -one ratio. I've reduced them to about 600 pixels. Where am I now? Well, I'm on the block. Okay, there we go. And then the last image I'm going to bring in hey, is this one, right? Okay, so you see there we have now our own images. I'm going to duplicate these two and then click on it and drag it in here. Okay, wait, click and drag, click and drag. Then remember we have to change our settings for our padding here, 35, 45. 35, tap, tap, 45, tap, tap, and 65, tap, tap, and 65, T's and C's apply. There we go. Right. And then we have to bring in our spacer at 210. And apply an overlay color. I'm going to use my own overlay color for this one. I'm going to use white. I think the white looks pretty nice. And then reduce it to... Uh, there. One of the things I want to mention about opacity, I often see people when they're playing around with the opacity slider, they bring it all the way down like this. You know, when you are doing this, it's just for an effect. It's just to give you sort of like a an environmental feeling of where you are. You need your text to stand out. And you will see that most of the websites that do use opacity, they leave it quite high, anywhere from 70 up to 90%. And this is the current styling and trend at the moment, is not to bring the opacity down too low, but to take it up there. If you don't need it, you leave it open like this personal preferences right so of course we have to go change this let's make it this color and we can leave that one very nice let's also take away this padding up here more settings on padding zoop and take it away and then it's going to display okay as we know now on your desktop but for mobile go into mobile go down and then here you have to drag in a spacer Spacer, ooh la la, come spacer, aha, uh -huh. seems we cannot do that in mobile view, even though there's a plus there. This is an interesting thing, we learn as we go along, go back to desktop, drag in our spacers. And what we've learned now is that the spacer settings applied here apparently does not apply in mobile view, so no need for me to go and drag and do all that work, I can just go ahead and drag in the spacer to each of these columns. After I've done that, we go back to mobile. And there we go. Now we grab it and we said we're going to just type it in at 250 pixels. Voila. Why did it go to 244? Did I type in 244? Okay, there's it. Strange things happen. Right. Must be the block nose. Blame it on the block nose. And the last one. Enter. Good. Right. And let's preview it again. Close out this one. And there we go. Right. Already looking nice. You can build up a nice image gallery like this. Wow, the crowds. And let's look at it in mobile view. Okay. This one we didn't put in any spacers. This one we did. And our own one we did. Looking pretty nice. There you go. So remember the things that we have talked about in this video. It seems that now if you load a block, the images also come into your media library. And whenever you load a block into Brizzy, please remember to go and check your mobile responsiveness. And if you have an image in a column, you will need to add a spacer if you want it to display. Right. This is JP. See you in the next video.